In my previous JavaScript videos, I've taught about the core language that is JavaScript, things like variables and functions as used within script tags in a web browser. Now, I'm going to talk about something more advanced, which is Node. In future videos, I'll be making a full Express web application that is driven by a database and show you all of the code related to how to do that. But before I get there, I'd like to present some conceptual concepts that will make learning more advanced topics in JavaScript easier. All right, with respect to the United States, I'd like to ask this question. How are adults different than young teenagers, like those that are 14 years old, with respect to their rights in society? Well, if you've lived here or visited here, you know that we can't, as a young person, take out a bank loan or get married. You can't skydive before you're 18 years old. You can't have a full-time job while you're still enrolled in high school and 18 or younger. You can't join the military and you can't vote. There's actually a lot more things you can't do, but point being, when you're young, you can't do things that adults do. Similarly, JavaScript kind of reminds me of a teenager in the sense that it has limited permissions when we're running it in a web browser. But if you combine JavaScript with Node, then it becomes more like an adult in that it has all of the normal permissions that you would expect a language to have. So what are these permissions that are kind of universal and those that are more advanced or adult-like? Well, um, in every single programming language, like the ones on the left, tend to have things like variables, operators, if statements, loops, functions, blocks of code, and normally things like classes and objects that are part of them. So this is shared among most programming languages. But JavaScript, as I note on the left with the red font, doesn't and can't do some of the things that are listed here on the right. Read write from a hard drive, install and remove programs from a computer, interact with the database, do sophisticated network communications like via web server based on the code that you write. These are things that you can typically do in any other language right out of the box the second you install it on your computer, but you can't do it with JavaScript, at least the JavaScript that comes with your web browser. What are the things that you can do with JavaScript in your web browser? Well, all of the normal stuff. What are the things you can't do? Well, all of the stuff that regular languages can do when you install them on a computer. But if you install Node, and you note the little icon there on the computer screen, if you use Node as an execution environment for your JavaScript programming language, then suddenly you can do all the things that other languages can do when they're installed on your computer. And so let's just take a step back for a second. And, and perhaps you learned JavaScript by initially learning HTML and then learning some JavaScript to interact with that HTML. And so why is it that JavaScript is limited in its capabilities compared to other programming languages? And I have a little crib here indicating what it's like to run JavaScript within a crib or within a, um, within a web browser. It's you're limited like a little kid in a crib who can't do very much. You're, like you're in jail when you're programming there. Um, why is it that we don't give JavaScript access to your hard drive and the ability to talk over the network? Well, think about how web pages are used. There are billions of web pages that are sourced from all kinds of different places on the, on the globe, around the globe. And if all of them included script tags that could do things like write to your database and then talk to everywhere else on the internet, then very quickly you would have hackers who would be formatting your hard drive, reading all of your files, writing things to your computer, installing programs that you don't want. So that would be very bad if they could do that. And so it was a purposeful decision to create a limited language that could only do certain things within the web browser, but, but couldn't do things that other programming languages could do, at least while it's running in the web browser. And historically, whenever we tagged the word script at the end of a programming language, that was meant to signify to people that it's not a full language. It doesn't do everything that a regular language does. And so for a long time, JavaScript was just a limited language that ran in the web browser. Okay, let's talk about, uh, as we get closer to talking about Node, uh, how JavaScript can be used differently. Now, over here on the left-hand side, I have a depiction of JavaScript that is running in your web browser. And your web browser is running on your computer, and we typically uh, at least in programming circles, call that the client. That is the thing that's reaching out to a website to do some interactions. And then over here, I have this thing that says server. And a server represents a computer that has a website hosted on it. And if you install Node 
on a web server. It has JavaScript then has the ability to run on that computer and do things like talk to its local hard drive and interact with the database, something that JavaScript running within a web browser cannot do. So because JavaScript running in Node is pretty powerful, it can read from different folders and compile or retrieve an HTML page and then subsequently send that HTML page over to a web browser where a typical person would view it. And one of the nice things about programming languages is they allow you to not just work with static files, meaning files that haven't changed off of a hard drive, they allow you to do things like take the top of an HTML document which has head and the begin body tag and you could put that into like a header file.html and then you could have a footer file.html which has end body and HTML. So you could separate your HTML into different documents and in the middle of that document you could create it dynamically with a programming language by interacting with the database. Uh, let's take an example here. Let's just say that you have a bank account and you have the, the bank's header for their page in HTML and their footer with all the nice links in there. But the exact details of what's going on in your bank account is going to be displayed in a table and you generate that dynamically by having a programming language go out to a database, retrieve a bunch of records related to your account, brings them back, and you would then insert all of that data into an HTML page that is then just one single HTML page, not three different things. You, the server turns it into one single HTML page and send, sends it down to the client. And so JavaScript over on the server is used to compile your document or create your document from possibly multiple sources and interact with the database, whereas JavaScript over here on the client within your web browser can be used to do things like verify the input in a form or do some other cool little animation that's there. Okay, so based on that explanation, there are a lot of different programming languages that you can run on a server. So we're talking about JavaScript today, running in the node execution environment, but you could also install Java, C Sharp, or any of these other languages to run on your server, and they can do the exact same thing, meaning they can create HTML documents on the fly and have those HTML documents contain the information that is in a database. But if you think, well, let's, let's just talk about why that was problematic. One of the reasons why that's been problematic over history is because what that meant is that if you are a web developer, you needed to learn two programming languages. You needed to learn HTML and specifically JavaScript as the programming language to run in your web browser to do whatever you needed to do in there. And then you needed to learn historically another programming language to interact with the database and create your web pages on the fly. And so originally JavaScript wasn't available to be used on the server. And as people thought about that, they realized, hey, I have to learn JavaScript no matter what. That's the only thing that runs in the web browser. What if I only learned one programming language? Wouldn't that be nice? And so that's where Node came about, this idea that you could learn JavaScript and program both on the client and on the server in JavaScript and then not have to learn two different languages. Let's install Node. If you go over to nodejs.org, then either on the home page or on the downloads tab, you'll see installers for whatever operating system it is that you're using. Generally speaking, you're safe to install everything that it asks you to install. But if you want to save a little bit of space, then if you see something that says NPM modules need to be compiled from C, C++ when installing, or if you see something that says Stack Builder, those are things that are outside of the scope of the lessons that I'm going to be working on with you. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, now that you have Node installed, you probably didn't see anything interesting happen. So let's check and make sure that it is installed. If you're using Windows, you can go down to the Start menu in the lower left and type in either CMD for the command prompt or type in PowerShell and it will open up a terminal window. If you're on Mac, you can open up your terminal through a variety of ways. I have mine pinned at the bottom. And once it is open, you can type in in either type of window, PowerShell or terminal on Mac, you can type in node-v. And if it returns 
some version number, then you know that you know that you're good to go. All right. Once you have that tested and it's working, let's go ahead and go to the next step and create our first Node application. All right, so I have created a folder on my computer and I'm going to open it right now. It's an empty folder. It's on my desktop. I'll go by date modified here, see if I can find it. All right, my first Node app. Call your folder whatever you want. Okay, my file structure is empty right now. It's just a folder. And I will create a new file and call it myfile.js. Now, if you've been doing other videos of mine related to JavaScript, you'll know that historically we've been creating HTML pages and then adding script tags to that and putting JavaScript in there. Another option is you can create a separate .js file and reference JavaScript using a script source equals tag. But finally, because we're using Node, we're freed of the constraints of the browser, and we can write JavaScript code in separate files and execute it from a terminal window. All right, let's go ahead and start writing some code. So we'll do the traditional hello world. Let's put a little comment here. Let's do hello world, and I'll say console.log hello world and then I will hit save okay now we need to run this program and I'm going to sh show you two different ways that you can find this program on your hard drive and execute it using node so here's the harder way go to your terminal and if you are using a Mac you can type present working directory and see where you are and then start changing directories to get into the place that you want to go in my case, I know that if I type ls, I have a bunch of folders on my uh, computer, and one of those happens to be desktop. And then referencing this little folder right here, I can say uh, cd my first node app. And once I hit ls and I see that file name, I know that I am in the right folder. Now, if I was on Windows, I could, there's a couple different things I could do. I could open up a file explorer and I could navigate to the right place and then in the little space that shows the location of where you're at at the top of the file explorer window, you can just type right over the file path and type in CMD and hit return and it'll open up a terminal that's in the right folder. Another thing you can do is go to PowerShell or the command prompt from the start menu and just start typing CD, type the name of a folder, like for example, documents and settings and hit tab and it'll do autocomplete. And you just keep on doing CD until you get to the right folder. I will note that on any type of computer, sometimes having spaces in your folder names can be bad. So hopefully that doesn't uh, hurt you. Worst case, you can always create a new folder that's closer to the root of your directory, which on Macs is forward slash, and on PCs is a C drive. And so if you, you know, on a PC created C drive slash my node app, it would be easier to then change into that folder by doing CD, CD space C drive backslash, and then like my first node app, something like that. Okay, so that's just a nice little tip for you. Okay, now that I am in the right place, I can execute the program. I'm gonna type in node space myfile.js, and there it is, it returns hello world. And as one of my colleagues like to say, likes to say, go ahead and sell that for a million dollars because now you have a really exciting application that you've written. Okay, let's do something a little bit more complex to demonstrate how this works. If you've been doing my other videos in the past, then you've been working with objects in JavaScript. So let's just demonstrate that all the regular things in JavaScript do function here in the node execution environment. So I'll create some classes, class person, and I'll use Hungarian notation. We'll give them a name, and then we are going to have a child of that. So we'll say class student extends person. We'll give them a float 
student well actually I'll give him a float GPA all right so let's create an object of these types and uh, I didn't put in constructors because I'm trying to save a little bit of time so I'll just say let object student equals new student and I didn't set up getters or setters or private variables I'll just I, I left I left them as private attributes so I'll say let I'll just say um, o student dot s first name and I'll set this to my name and then I'll say o student dot gpa equals 4.0 hopefully and then we'll just write that out to the screen student name is writing a string concatenate o student dot first name concatenate some more and gpa is spring off the end of the screen here so add on a little bit more that's a little plus there and uh, o student dot gpa and make sure i've got a semicolon okay and if i hit save then the plugin i have installed reformats the code a little bit to be more readable okay before i'd shown you that you could run node programs by going to the terminal finding the folder of the programs that you're working with and then typing node space that there's another way to do that and that is by using the terminal viewer that's embedded in Visual Studio Code. So if you find terminal and then do new terminal, notice that it opens up a terminal at the bottom of your screen. And if you type in PWD on a Mac or DIR in Windows, you can verify that you are in the right folder. And in either of those, well, yeah, if you type in LS, you can see the, the contents of where you're at. All right, um, let's go ahead and run this program, node myfile.js. All right, and so it works just like we planned. Now you've written two programs in node, and let's go on to the next topic.